Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about some weird things that we start to see once we start making molecules. And this is going to bring up a new topic for us called hybridization. Now hybridization is going to be the mixing of atomic orbitals to make new hybrid orbitals that are suitable for bonding. Now let's look at methane here on the left. This is CH4 with a carbon in the center surrounded by four hydrogens. Now we know from VSEPR theory that if there are four things surrounding a central atom, that then it should adopt what we call a tetrahedral geometry with a 109.5 degree angle roughly around the center. But if we look a little bit deeper, there's some weird stuff that goes on, mainly on the carbon. Carbon, if you remember, has an electron configuration of a helium core with two electrons in the 2s sublevel and two electrons in the 2p sublevel. And if we draw out an orbital diagram for this, it would look like this. Alright, so those are the electrons that are a part of carbon on its valence level. Now we have that s orbital that's fully filled, and then we have two electrons, one each, in 2p orbitals. Now I have an image right here of the 2p and the 2s orbitals surrounding carbon. And if you look at it, we have our 2s here in the center, which has a spherical shape, and then all of my 2p orbitals have that parabolic shape, and they're going in the x, y, and z directions. Now that makes things kind of weird because they're all 90 degrees away from each other. And so how do we get that tetrahedral shape? Another weird thing happens when we start to look at how carbon is it even able to have that many bonds. Remember to have a covalent bond, each atom has to supply one electron into that bond. Well, if we look at that orbital diagram of carbon, it looks like there's only two electrons that are in orbitals that are half full to be able to donate into making a bond. These two right there. So how do we get four bonds with that tetrahedral shape? Well, this is where hybridization comes in. The idea is that these atomic orbitals are only suitable when we're talking about the atom itself and not when it's part of a molecule bonding to something else. So when an atom like carbon here bonds with hydrogens, it's going to hybridize its orbitals to make the right type of orbitals for bonding. And to do that, we're going to take all the orbitals that are needed in order to bond and bring them together and then pull out some hybrid orbitals. In this case, we have four orbitals that are needed to bond with four different hydrogens. So what we're going to do is we are going to take all four orbitals that are available to us. That's the 2s and three of the 2p orbitals. And we're going to hybridize them and make four hybrid orbitals out. The rule is however many atomic orbitals go in is the same number of hybrid orbitals coming out. So four orbitals went in and we get one, two, three, four orbitals out. The cool thing about this is now the energy of all four orbitals is a mixture of the energies of the orbitals that went in. So it has a mixture of the energies of the 2s sublevel and the 2p sublevel, but all four of them are now the same exact energy. And now we can put the electrons in there, and because they're the same energy, we get one electron in each orbital. Now we have four orbitals that are half full, ready for bonding and they now have a different shape. We now have to label them differently because they're no longer the s and the p orbitals, they're hybrid orbitals, and we name them based on the atomic orbitals that went in. We had one s orbital and three p orbitals go in, so each one of these orbitals coming out is going to be named sp3 orbitals. So we have one, two, three, four sp3 hybridized orbitals. Let's look at what this looks like in a simulation. All right, in this simulation, we are now looking at a carbon atom that's right here in the center. Okay, remember that carbon atom, when it's alone, is going to have an s and 
one, two, three p orbitals. And now we're showing all the orbitals that are there on that carbon. Now remember that this isn't going to be good enough for bonding with those four hydrogens. We first need to hybridize them. So we're going to hybridize by clicking the button. And we see one, two, three, four hybrid orbitals coming out. We can rotate this and look at it a little bit. And as you can see, the shapes are different. The shape looks tetrahedral. And we have these big lobes coming out in all those different directions, 109.5 degrees between them to help with bonding. Now it should be noted that there's this little lobe on the back side and that is part of that hybrid orbital, but we don't usually think of that little lobe being involved in bonding. So we just focus on that big part of the lobe. While we're here, let's finish making our molecule. We had CH4, so I'm gonna put four more hydrogens in there. Remember, hydrogen has that one S orbital. So I'm gonna put four hydrogens with their one S orbital and bring it all together to make a molecule. Now watch as I bring those hydrogens in, and we're going to look at those orbitals now interacting to make that bond. Remember, we're assuming that there's one electron in the hydrogen 1s orbital, and now one electron in that sp3 hybridized orbital on the carbon. Now watch this. Boop. 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 And here is an orbital view of methane, of our carbon bonding with those four hydrogens, which looks really, really cool. And we get a very interesting look at how we think of electrons and bonding working. They're in orbitals, and those orbitals are sharing space and helping to kind of glue these atoms together. Watch as I try and pull one of the hydrogens out. And watch what happens to those orbitals. They stretch and they really kind of resist, kind of resist that tug to break that bond until the bond is broken. But then we can bring it right back in and it grabs it right again. Let's look at another example. All right, in this next example, we're going to be looking at BH3. So BH3 is a really interesting molecule because uh, there is a lack of electrons available around the boron with the hydrogens. So there are only three hydrogens around boron before it ran out of electrons. And so we end up getting this trigonal planar shape with 120 degrees around it. Again, let's do the same treatment that we did with our CH4. Looking at the boron, boron has an electron configuration of a helium core 2s2, 2p1. And if we looked at the orbital diagram of that, this is what it would look like. Again, we have the 2s sublevel full, and we have one electron in the 2p sublevel. If we just took everything from the atomic orbitals, it would look like boron can only make one bond but we're going to hybridize in order for it to make three bonds. In this case, we need three orbitals out, so we only need three orbitals in. So let's look at what that would look like. We're gonna take from the 2s and two of the 2ps now to give us the three orbitals at the end in order to make three covalent bonds. And now we can put those electrons in those new hybridized orbitals, one each. We can name these hybridized orbitals based on the orbitals that went in. In this case, we took 1s and 2ps, so we're going to label these sp2 hybridized. This gives us the right number of orbitals to make the number of bonds in BH3. Not only that, is the shape of these orbitals are going to work according to Vesper theory or VSEPR theory in order to give us the right angle. So these would be 120 degrees away from each other. 
Now, an interesting thing happens with this molecule right here. What happened to that other orbital? That other orbital wasn't hybridized with the rest. That orbital didn't go away. It stayed there, but it stayed unhybridized. So we're going to put that one still there as an unhybridized 2p orbital. Let's look at what that looks like using the simulation. All right, back in the simulation, now we're looking at boron. Remember, boron, we needed three hybrid orbitals out, and that came from the s and two of the p's. So let's put those in there. Here's the s orbital, and we're going to put two p's in there. Looking at that, now again, those two p orbitals are 90 degrees away from each other. They're not in the right shape or orientation for BH3. But then what we're going to do is we're going to hit this hybridize button here in the corner, and we see three hybridized orbitals, all 120 degrees away from each other in that classic trigonal planar geometry. Now remember, there was that fourth unhybridized orbital, that orbital still there. So if we put that orbital back, this is what that would look like. So there is that unhybridized p orbital. It is 90 degrees away from all three of my hybridized orbitals. So if my hybridized orbitals are laying flat like they are here, the unhybridized p orbital is going up and down 90 degrees away from those orbitals. Let's look at one more example. Okay, in this last example, we're going to be looking at quite a weird molecule. We're looking at beryllium interacting with two hydrogens. Now, in this case, beryllium is very electron deficient, so beryllium can only make two bonds with hydrogen. Let's look at what that would look like from the electron configuration standpoint. Beryllium has a helium core and two S electrons. And now let's look at the orbital diagram for that. According to the orbital diagram, beryllium shouldn't be able to make any bonds. Having filled the S sublevel and having a fully empty P sublevel. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to hybridize in order to give it two orbitals that are available for bonding. So we're going to take from the 2S and one of the two P's. We're going to hybridize those and put the electrons in them. We have one electron each able to make two bonds, which is what we see with the BEH2. Again, the shape of these should be as far apart from each other as possible, and according to VSEPR theory, that should give us 180 degrees. Now, just like before, we have to look at what happened to the other orbitals that were not hybridized. In this case, we have two p orbitals that were not hybridized during this process. They're still there, and we have to take account for them. So we have two p orbitals that were still unhybridized, where we only hybridized two orbitals. Naming those two orbitals is going to be based on what orbitals went in. We had an s orbital go in and one p orbital go in, so each one of these is called sp. So we have two sp hybridized orbitals and two unhybridized p orbitals. Let's look at what this looks like with the simulation. All right, we have beryllium here ready to be hybridized. It had an s orbital and one p orbital that got hybridized. So here's that before hybridization. And now once we hit this hybridize button, here now we have the two hybridized orbitals ready for bonding. We can't forget about those unhybridized orbitals, so we can put both of those back in, and we see that those are 90 degrees away from our hybridized orbitals, and both of them are sitting now 90 degrees away from each other. So this is what beryllium looks like as it's bonding in BeH2.